Sushi has a set of awards which are not of the traditional nature. First, we begin handing out the awards in our Canon Photo Contest, presented by Canon, delighting you always. For more than 250 photographs submitted, the list was narrowed down by a panel of five judges to 20, then further trimmed down to 10 before coming up with the top three photographs. The photographer of the winning photos will receive the corresponding prizes together with his or her editor. Okay, here we go. Our third place winner submitted an entry entitled Arwin Jammer from UAPGames.com, Mr. Edilberto Aguila. There you go, congratulations. Next, our runner-up submitted an entry entitled Ballerina from ArcherPride.com, Mr. Vic Icasas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our grand prize winner submitted an entry entitled The Human Sandwich from Philippine Journalists Incorporated, Mr. Raul Guerrero. Congratulations to all the winners in the Canon Photo Contest brought to you by Canon, delighting you always. Moving ahead this season, PS Bank sponsored a portion of each game that featured the best offensive move by an individual player known as the PS Bank Ultimate Fast Move. Now, out of more than 40 Showtime moves, three stood out, and the players who executed them were selected by a panel of judges. Now, of these three highlight attractions, one was selected as the winner of the PS Bank Ultimate Fast Move of the Year. And the winner of the PS Bank Ultimate Fast Break Move of the Year comes from the De La Salle Green Archers, the Ninja, Joseph Yo. Congratulations, Joseph, and good luck in game two later on. Now, you know, part of the game of basketball involves setting up your teammates and creating opportunities for them to score. And each year, one individual exemplified team play by topping the league in the assists category. The winner of the KFC Assist of the Game Award averaged a UAAP best 5.5 assists per contest. He is none other than playmaker for the Ateneo Blue Eagles, L.A. Tenorio. He scores! Tenorio against JV. They go to the other side and a nice fake by Dan Hurst. The whole season. Tenorio this time to Kramer. Now what? Ateneo is... He goes to L.A. L.A. Sinal. Sinal. Congratulations to L.A. Tenorio. Now... Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the moment a lot of you have been waiting for. Of course, that is previous or prior to game number two of the finals. This, ladies and gentlemen, are the main awards portion for the seniors division. Now, great defense always makes great things possible. Okay, so I guess the audience agrees. Our next awardee proved that you can overpower your opponents by doing the less glamorous work on the defensive end. The 2005 UAB Globe Defensive Player of the Year comes from the FBU Tamaraos, Arwin Santos. Set the game up to him. Meyer Hoffer, very tentative. No confidence in that move against Hunkaido. With the clamps from Joseph Hill. Joseph Hill has nowhere to go, but hey. Missing the three. Meyer Hoffer, oh, rejected. Arwin. Congratulations, Arwin Santos. Ladies and gentlemen, back-to-back -back Defensive Player of the Year awards. 
the 2005 Milo Rookie of the Year comes from the Ateneo Blue Eagles, Dynamite, Jai Reyes. They don't want to leave. Reyes open. Gets it to Jai Reyes. Only in the fourth quarter. Oh. Oh. Congratulations, Dynamite. Our Mentos Mythical Five. The first member, the man in the middle, at center from the FBU Tamara. Next, ladies and gentlemen, at the forward position, making his third straight appearance, also from the FEU Tamaraos. Congratulations, Arwin Santos, our third member, also playing forward from the NU Bulldogs, Mr. Edwin Asoro. Returning for his second consecutive appearance in the Mythical Five from the point guard position. From the Ateneo Blue Eagles, L.A. Tenorio. But definitely not the least from the Dallas Green Archers, Joseph Yo, the ninja. Yo again driving, this time going hard against Yo. Go back to Yo for another three. Get oh, to Chico. You can't ask for any better defense from Fernandez. He had a hand in Joseph Yo's face. Congratulations to the Mythical Five selection. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now down to one. Last award, the moment of truth has finally arrived. Who will be this year's MVP? Without further ado, the 2005 Samsung UAB Seniors Most Valuable Player. For the second straight year from the FBU Tamaraos, Arwin Santos. Santos for the three. Yeah! Our win. Congratulations, Arwin Santos. Two Defensive Player of the Year awards, two MVPs, a lot of goodie bags to take home. Arwin Santos, this year's MVP. I'm going to give you a few 
Deli Lancha, Deli Lancha, Deli Lancha. I'm going to give you a few minutes to say thank you. Good afternoon to all of you. Nagpapasalamat uh, ako sa inyong lahat na nandiri ito ngayon. Hindi lang sa mga FPU. Siyempre, sa kabila rin. Nagpapasalamat din ako. Dahil puno itong court. As I taas, nagpapasalamat din ako sa kanya. Pinigay niya sa akin itong pangalawang MVP. Thank you very much. At sa mga sumusuporta sa akin, sa mga mahal ko sa buhay, kay Mayor Pineda, saka kay Dogas Quiano, lahat, sa mama ko, mga kapatid ko. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Arwin Santos, back-to-back -back MVPs, back-to-back -back Defensive Player of the Year awards. Congratulations. Congratulations to our Mythical Five selection. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been waiting, you've been talking. Game number two of the finals is coming up next here on Studio 23. Titanic battle 
with a one to nothing advantage in this best of three series. Today, it will be up to the defending champion, Delasal Green Archers, to make the adjustments. It is up to them whether to extend their rule or not, as we welcome you to game two of the finals, live from the other end of the Coliseum in Cabal, Quezon City, the finals of season 68, the men's basketball tournament. City, the Araneta Coliseum, ready to pop, ready to explode for game two of the finals featuring FU and Delasal. I'm Alex Compton. This is the kind of game players live for. This is the kind of series players like. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this place is jam packed. Up. It is so exciting in here. What an atmosphere. Everything's on the line. Everything that these kids have been working for, really their whole lives in terms of basketball, is going to be lived out on this court today. So we have an intense atmosphere ready to go. The one that won game number one, and that is FEU, will go through their strengths. It is the team that lost game number one that will make the adjustments as we take a look at the numbers here. Absolutely. Well, we had just such a great game one. I mean, it couldn't have been any better. Came down to two points, and it's one of those games where until the buzzer went off, you did not know who was going to win. Casio had a three at the end that you thought LaSalle might have won. It just bounced off harmlessly. But if we see, there's some key statistics there. Rebounding FEU, who's the most dominant rebounding team in the UAAP, out-rebounded LaSalle by 10. And on the other side, LaSalle, who forces the most turnovers, plays the best pressure basketball, forced FEU into 27 turnovers. They did a great job. And I think that's why we had such a great game that went down to the wire. Absolutely. Now we will take a look at some keys that are important for each of these teams to be able to score a win here today. For FEU, let's go to them first. Yeah, well, with FEU, the first thing you need to realize is you cannot be complacent. No way can you be complacent. This LaSalle team, you squeak by with a two-point win. You could have lost if that three went. The series is far from over. And you need to play today like it's your last game ever. There is no game three in your mind. You need to lock that out as if this is a do or die game so that your very best will be on the floor. Be ready for a war. The second thing is you need to take care of the basketball. The South strength is they force turnovers, they force turnovers, they get easy baskets, they get fast break layups. You need to take care of the basketball. You turned the ball over 27 times last game against LaSalle's press. Don't expect to do that again and come out victorious. And the third thing is a supporting cast really needs to step up. They need to step up and make shots. I mean, Arlen Santos, fantastic game. You cannot expect him to contis consistently score 29 points and put the team on his back. Isip Chan, Rizada, and Villanueva shot 8 for 32 from the field. That's only 25%. Those guys are going to get some open shots. They need to step up step up, make the shots, knock them down. And now the Dallas All Green Archers, the defending champions, have a few things they have to take care of if they hope to tie up the series. The first thing is you just got to believe. You got to believe. You got to realize that on your bench is the winningest coach since he's coming to the UAAP. You have a successful program. LaSalle has always been there in the championship since Coach Franz took over. They've had a winning program. You need to believe in the system, stay within yourself, believe in your teammates, do what it was that got you here. You had won six straight games coming into last game, so you need to believe in your team, your system, and your coach. The second thing is you need to attack the glass. You have to be absolutely tenacious on the backboard. FEU dominates the glass. That can't happen again. You can't be out-rebounded by 10. When the shot goes up, find a body, and when the ball's loose, you need to be all over it. And the final thing is, again, the supporting cast for LaSalle needs to step up. Joseph Yo, what an incredible game again last game. The stars from both teams really stepped up. Joseph Yo, great game. But Kabatu, Tong, Casio, and Benitez shot 7 for 30 from the field. Only 23.3%. Those guys are going to have to step up, make shots, and make plays. Thank you very much. Alex Compton will be listening to him for the course of the afternoon. And so will the coaches be concentrating on this game. Franz Pumar and he's been there. Bert Flores, first time to be here, but he's been an assistant before. Will he win it all today? More questions than answers as we unfold game two of the finals of season 68 of the UAAP. May you continue to guide us in all our undertakings so that 
we will attain the desired end for which these endeavors are conceived and envisioned. May all of us remain faithful to you and continue to uphold the values for which UAAP stands. Bless, Lord, our players and also our officials. Give them the courage and the strength to be able to perform the best they can. Endow them with the spirit of sportsmanship, friendship, and respect for each other. This we ask of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much, UAAP President Father Maximino Rendon. You may now have your handshakes, gentlemen. And to our UAAP fans, you may now take your seats. Oh, 40,000 in attendance in a jam-packed Big Dome or Atlanta Coliseum and the millions more watching nationwide on Studio 23 and worldwide on the Filipino channel, the UAAP and ABS-CBN Sports bring you game number two of the UAAP Season 68 Men's Basketball Finals. It's the Lazar Green Archers versus the FEU Tabanaos. The Tabanaos lead a series one game to zero. Let's meet our Polo starting fives. Polo, Lysa, a whole lot killer with Polo. Starting for the defending champions, the Lazar Green Archers. And guard number 11, D. Number 18, Ryan Alanya. At center, number 5, Jude Gabato. At forward, number 12, J.R. Aquino. And the other forward, number 8, the ninja, Joseph Yo. The coach, Chris Pomade. Stunning. For the team with the best record in the league, the FEU Tabernacles. At guard number 14, Jonas Villanueva. And the other guard, number 7, Benedict Fernandez. At center, number 18, Francis Barcelliano. At forward, number 19, the MVP, Arwen Sattel. And the other forward, number eight, R.J. Rezada. The coach, Robert Flores. Our recent ball game, and we got Benny on this. Go to the final, and go to the final, and reserve, Amado Soriano. Physically, Father, Maximino, President of the UAAP with a prayer to start activities in game number two. Polo likes a whole lot cooler with Polo, and game two is underway. This is the moment, Alex, for both the coaches. Take a moment, watch the game, be quiet, see how it evolves. And immediately, LaSalle with a failed offensive try, their first attempt. Start off right away, taking the ball strong to the basket. You know, he had such a great game in game one. He did all you could ask of him. He's trying to start off again, keep that thing going. There's Aranya. And this place is jammed back, as Alex pointed out. In game number one, LaSalle started slow, was down by as much as 13 to 6. And Aranya chases this one down. Weiss, he says, let's set it up. That's right. LaSalle needed that. They needed Aranya to point the ball out, set it up, keep, get their composure, work the ball around, and get a good shot. It's Yo with a twisting attempt. It will stay for the Green Archers. And FEU was the best defensive team in the UAAP this year starting off this game showing their, their defensive prowess and anytime I look at every level wherever it is UAAP, NCAA, PBL, other pro leagues, the NBA, the best defensive team seems that they're always in the finals. 
In the meantime, Camacho with a scoop shot. There is a foul on the attempt. Darferio, McBantai, Zambrano are the men with the whistles. And Cabato is really going to need to have a good game today. Uh, didn't shoot the ball very well last game. And, you know, he's an excellent player, but he's got his hands full with Santos, with Isip, with the whole front line of, of uh, FEU. He's got quite a challenge in front of him. He really needs to step up for LaSalle in this game, too. At nine points in 32 minutes of action, that point. Final sound, we are still scoreless after almost two minutes. You know, in this game, if it's anything like game one, it could be a game of runs. So even if you're one team that starts off hot or is going well, if you're a team that's starting off behind, it's all right. You know things are going to happen. There's going to be a lot of momentum swings today. Like in the first game, Kasha waxed spot for De La Salle when they began to seem to not be on the ground. FBU did a good job of breaking the press, but Hernandez unable to score at De La Salle trying to have a very hot start this afternoon, you can tell. Villanueva tries to work against Aranya. They look inside to Yo, goes away. Good idea, and right now I think we've got both teams sort of feeling the uh, tension of this uh, game, too. And to the students who live in the dormitories of both schools, uh, the dormitories outside their schools, Magandang Hapo and Senyang Lahat. Sam Sarmenta, Alex Gomez, Mone, Sada, and Forks, yes! Big shot. You know, last game, RJ was out only had four shot attempts, and he only made one. He's a guy I'm going to look for today to step up, get some more shots, and knock them down. And quickly, it is 3 to 1, 8.13 to go. Here's Aquino with a shot. Look at Aranya finding space, always creating space. And Marcellana takes it away. We have a foul. And you know, for Aranya, he is just a really tough player. A great game one, tough player who always seems to get those offensive rebounds. As you see in that smart buddy three. Let's go quickly to Mickey Dallas for a Samsung Fortnite update about the defending champions, the Green Archers. Since Thursday, they've the team's mind. And here's the gist. Coach Van told them, let's dig deeper into ourselves because we have so much more to give. Mistakes were made, but mistakes build experience. And now you are experienced. Let's not be disheartened. Let us band together and move in one direction as we go over this hump. In light of all that has happened this week, this is no longer just a team of 14 set. With undying support of alumni, this has become a team of all the LaSalians. This is one team with one dream. We are one LaSalle, Seb. And we will speak with a loud one voice this afternoon because there are a thousand voices competing <laughs> with us here, Mickey, today. And so far, LaSalle with the aggressive start. Risada on courts. Yes! Oh, the glass. Good job, Wow. He'll take it. Big shot. RJ Rosada already two for two from the three-point range. Banda pa. Aranya's first shot. No. It goes into the hands of Fernandez. Quickly to Rosada. Who kicks it over to the wrong man. And we got some frenetic basketball. A hectic pace going up and down. A few turnovers. Here comes Yo. Blocked by Aaron Santos. He's just frustrated. That's Yo who tried to bat it away from Santos. And right now, LaSalle's been doing a good job with pressure defense, knocking the ball around. FU really needs to pass the ball and not dribble so much. Double team on Arvin, created the entry pass to Barcelona. That's right, and a great pass by Arvin Santos. He didn't try to do too much off the dribble with the double team. Barcelona made a good cut to the basket. Nice find from the MVP. Aquino with his first foul. Take a look at his follow. Finds a whole lot cooler with follow shot block. And I think... There is no timeout called. It looks like one, but we are continuing. It's 8-3 to three FU with 6.35 to go. What a great entry pass. Absolutely. And if, if you're a cutter or if you're man double teams, you need to move into an open spot where you'll be available to receive the pass from the offensive player getting doubled. Just a simple basketball. Nice cut to the basket, and the big guy went up strong, finished, was able to draw the foul. You know, if you're not used to playing against LaSalle, they will really pull you into their dragnet, into their web, into their vortex, call it what you want. But if you are not aware and prepared for it, you will be sucked into it. Absolutely. Well, one thing they do with the pressure basketball, with the dribble, if you dribble too much against their man-to-man -man pressure and don't move the ball and set screens and just try to play one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of times you're playing right into their hands. 
Guys need to get open so they can pass the ball, move the ball around the perimeter, look inside, get the ball to the big man. They sort of expect you to be dribbling too much. In the meantime, a sound support side an FEU update from Yvette Gavieres. What happened last Thursday, the whole thing became more experimental. The internet had made the Far East University cameras even closer to each other. In fact, it inspired them to get their balls inside with pride. So the Tampa were hoping that this much awaited victory would already come to an end today. Also, we offer this game to those who are playing their last year this season. Namely, Eric Saldua, Mark Isep, Paul Flores, RJ Rizada, and most especially to our beloved, most valuable player, Arwen Santos. Seth? I have never seen this young man so pumped up this afternoon. Yeah, he he doesn't seem like he's complacent right now. He's playing with a little bit of a that, that chip on his shoulder. He wants to win this championship. You know, if you remember last year, these two teams met, and Arwen had a tip-in at the buzzer that could have made it a different outcome. And so I think he's got a lot that, that he wants to prove. Everybody knows he's an excellent adjustment. We've seen Joseph Yo try to take the ball inside, and the whole FEU team collapse on him. Other guys are going to need to be ready to step in, step up, and make shots now because defense is adjusted. Same thing goes for FEU. Guys are going to be ready for Arwen and really concentrating now more than ever on stopping Arwen Santos. Other FEU players need to step up. That won't go. That shot of Arwen Santos and Yo, we shot it at the airport on the uh, moving uh, transporter. That's why we have a dizzy cameraman right now. <laughs> Thought I'd break the tension a bit. <laughs> Nine to three, FBU leading here. Now the size factor, the rebounds went the way of FBU. That's something that Lasalle has to work on in the game this afternoon. Definitely. Uh, you know, both teams already said are are doing what they do best. FBU winning the rebounding battle. Lasalle forcing more turnovers, and it's going to really come down to, I think, whatever team can best negate the other team's strength. In the meantime, Marlon Adolfo called for an offensive foul off the inbound. And for Adolfo, that will be his first. Yeah, he tried to set a moving screen there, and uh, good call by the referee right on top of that one. Here's T.Y. Tang, really not a factor in game. Number one, Lasalle tried to get its signals. Together, Chan guilty of the hand check. Yeah, T.Y. Tang's a guy that, that we mentioned uh, before the game that, you know, he's a leader. He's done a great job for LaSalle. He's had a great career. He's really going to need to step up in this game, too, with the game on the line. They, they need players like him to step up and make plays. Make plays, get some scoring going. Here's Kasha, who waxed off in the first quarter of game number one. And gets jammed there, 17 on the shot clock. And there again, you see the collapsing defense of FU. And there's penetration in the lane. All the players drop in the lane and swarm the ball. It makes it very difficult to score in those circumstances. Off the inbound. Good inbound play by Dallas. Cavazzo on the firing end. And a nice head fake to get Arwin Santos up in the, in the air, which freed him for the shot. And FU caught traveling. Get it. You know, uh, Kabatu just made the head fake to get the shot off, and then he did a good job of actually forcing Isip into that travel by when Isip had his back turned, he rushed at him. So when he turned around, he got happy feet. <laughs> it's, it's the little things, really, Alex, huh? Absolutely. There's, basketball's a game of so many different little things. There's Aranya trying to work against Chan. Kasia, it's snapped away by Chan with some quick hands. Riyadweba. Downstairs nice. to Arwin. Oh, and nice patience by Villanueva right there to get him the ball. He took a few extra dribbles, waited for the play to develop, and made the, ta the pass at the right time. FEU able to get somebody from the bench like... Sorry, that, that three by Cascio was just desperately needed by LaSalle. FU had been on a little run there. They needed somebody to step up and make a basket. It was similar to what happened in game number one. I was about to say that Elder uh, Saldua was the one that FU turned to. It was Cascio that LaSalle turned to in that first half run as we check on this KMC assist. One of the candidates for assists of the game delivered by KMC. And one of the things that Arwin Santos is so good at, you know, he's an inside player for FEU, he's a foreman, but he runs the floor like a gazelle. I yes. mean, he is just sprints down the court, one of the fastest big men in the UAAP. Makes it very difficult for the other big men of LaSalle to try to catch up with him. Mark Isip pops his first. 
Habato down on the bench with two personal fouls. Benitez already in for the Green Archers. And Benitez, I believe, is going to have a big role here because FEU's front line is so strong. They rebound so well. Benitez really needs to crash the boards and to give us a big shot. Mark Eason missing both charities. Double lane violation, but the possession arrow pointing in the direction of the green and white. Ball game standing at 11-8. FEU still in the lead with 344 remaining in this opening quarter. And let's see if they run that play again, running uh, Kasho off some screens. They're going to run you off, you're off a staggered screen. And then Kasha makes his move. Inside. Nice. Oh, okay, they got this one. Oh, nice patience. Oh, nice read by Aranya to see that Isim jumped out on Kasha on the screen. Isim thinking he didn't want Kasha to hit another three, left his man. Aranya made a very nice pass. And the lead is down to one. It was largest at six. Way back when it was 9-3. Mark Isim wants to make up for those missed free throws. Oh. Anytime you have your center be able to put the ball on the floor that well and take the ball to the basket, makes it a difficult time for the other big men to guard it. Mark Eason, one of three players in double figures for FU in game number one with 10 points in 31 minutes. Casho just a little offline and Eason hauls it down for his second rebound. Downstairs we go and a foul could be called against Casho. Yeah, and, and I think that uh, after you felt they had a mismatch with Adolfo down there in the post, you see a of strong drive to the basket. And that is brought to you by New Rebigan Ion Energy Drink from Bichon Ion. And this is our Milo Winter matchup. Some very tall, very lean. Boy, I don't know what your inspiration was for this one, but this is so graphic. <laughs> Yeah, and both these guys are going to be a, just a huge part of this game. Very important rebounders. Meyerhofer really is going to be one of those guys that, again, needs to step up and help huge on the glass because FEU is the most dominant rebounding team in the UAAP. So guys like Meyerhofer are going to really need to step up. On the other side, Eason had a difficult game one. Uh, he shot two for 13 from the field, and he's a much better player than that. You know, credit the defense and LaSalle, but I expect a better game out of Mar Mark Eason today. He's a very good player. Our matchup brought to you by Milo Wafer. Solid dog. In the meantime, B.Y. Tide tries to get unglued. Here's Kasha wide open. Three. Santos uncontested for his fourth rebound. FEU by five. Time down to two and 20. Lasal hoping for an offensive foul. William Weber. Anderson Dua, who, as we mentioned, Scored 13 points in the first game there. Always there. Wow, and to have a big man like Meyerhofer be able to run the floor in transition, make that catch and that finish, tremendous. That's a big correction. So Lua scored 11 points. That basket will count. <laughs> you got two of the fastest big men in the UAP running the floor. Arwin Santos takes off sprinting after Meyerhofer's great catch and finish on one side. Sprints the other side, gets the ball, takes it strong to the basket, score the layup. And Meyerhofer, with his speed, catches up and almost blocks a shot to get the goal time. Earlier, a glimpse of Pachola Villanueva in our Addict Mobile profile. Addict Mobile prepaid, now you're in. Risada, who hit two three-pointers at the top of this first quarter. Yes, believe you me, it's still the first quarter. Casio, Risada back in the game as we were joined to mention. Casio tried to get loose. Meyerhofer with his first of the three. And a rebound by the Ninja. Sends it inside and stopped by Santos. They swing it downstairs. Benitez in a jam. They have 14 seconds. No need to rush, actually. Pass the runner. No! That was right, Seb. They had no reason to rush that shot. They, I guess they weren't aware of how much time they had left on the shot clock. There's Mark Eason right in Mark's face. Guilty of the offensive foul, and maybe rightfully so. Good defense right there by Meyer Hoffman to step in and take the charge. Eason a tad bit over-aggressive there on the drive. He made the right pass, but he couldn't stop his body from running through Meyer Hoffman. Now, these are the kinds of games, Alex, we're in. We use the cliche separating the men from the boys because you grow up all of a sudden in games like this. Absolutely, and it's really a game of mental toughness. There's tremendous athletes on the floor for both teams and guys that can perform and have good skills, but whoever's mentally tougher, I believe, is going to win this game. 
know, both sides are aching for a call on almost everything here. That's right. Well, everything. There's such tension, you know, there's so much on this game for these kids. And then you throw in, I don't know, it looks like a half a million fans in this building <laughs> screaming at the top of their lungs. It's an intense environment. Paolo Benitez is first. The team foul situation, Dallas all already in penalty. In fact, every already in penalty as well. We have Mangas checking in for the first time, giving Aaron Santos a breather. Yeah, and he, you know... He's one of those guys that's going to have just a couple minutes here and there if he's, if he's giving Arwen his breathers. But in games like these, you play two, three, four minutes, they can be four crucial minutes that have a significant impact on the game. So everybody who comes to the game needs to be exceptionally ready and geared up to go. And now Mark Eason has made the adjustment. He is now three of six on the free throw line, less than 60 seconds to go. Now need to try to find a way to get Joseph Yo going. There, Hoffberg going to be a He changes his mind about the shot. Yo. Now, Lewis ticking to Yo. There, Hoffberg is forced to put up those long shots. It's taken away by the cameras. Risada attacks seriously. Yes! Boy, is he stepping up right now. He's three for three already. Two threes, a nice, under control pull-up jump shot. And really, that happened to the defense of Joseph Yo trying to go from the steal from behind. It opened up the driving lane for Risada to make that nice shot off the glass. Risada with eight points. It is the biggest lead for FBU, a nine-pointer. And a strong drive to the basket by Joseph Yo, and really, he needed to get fouled. He needed, I think he needed to get to the line, get a couple easy looks at the basket, get, to, get his touch going, and settle down a little bit. He is LaSalle's guy. He is their go-to guy. It's good for him to get to the foul line here, be able to get some composure, and, and just get some easy, relaxed strokes. Every is on a 10-2 run, which has now lasted for about three minutes. You know, in any sport I cover, I look at the eyes of the athletes. And you can tell the determination that both sides have going into this game. Our vice president for sports, Mr. Peter Wisney, together with Giorgio Garcia of our sales group. Yeah, the, the, you see a lot in the eyes. I think when I watched, uh, I was doing the same thing, Seth, in, in the pregame warm-ups, and both teams just seemed so determined, so ready for work, as they should be. It is a lane violation by the Green Archers. Yo did not get the second free throw. 21 13 is the current now. Now, it is critical for the coaches in the action back emotion field game the way they put in the people in the hardwood as we take a look at Congresswoman Ivy Marcos. How you distribute the playing time will be critical, Alex. Absolutely. And, you know, gosh, as if these guys don't have enough to worry about, they got to think about that. Arwin tries to beat the buzzer. A little too strong, too much muscle. But FBU already ahead, 21-13, as the opening quarter draws to a close. Second quarter, just around the corner, we'll be back. Alex, you wanted to review the point about the substitutions we made by the coaches here. Yeah, well, a lot of these guys are going to be so excited, they're going to be giving their all, that they're going to be, you know, in and out of the game. And the coaches need to worry about the defense that the other team is playing, who's rebounding, you know, different strategies, you know, getting on the ref sometimes to help them get calls. And then you need to realize, okay, this guy's playing great, but he's tired. We need to get somebody in. Being a head coach is just such a tough job. Taking a look at Congresswoman Darlene Custodia. And that's why you need your assistance. You can never with a shot from the side. Coaching, just like basketball, really should be a team effort. Um, you can't do it all by yourself. But is this the right thing for MBA to do? I know they're ahead as Yo busts out. They're trying to speed up the game. Are they not falling into the trap of playing LaSalle's game? Well, I, I think absolutely. You know, LaSalle wants to press, cause turnovers, not let you shoot, and get easy shots themselves. They're just done. There's John, another turnover. John was in a hurry to make up for that bad pass earlier. Villanueva goes up with nothing, and a foul whistled against Resada. 
And all of a sudden, the 21-13 lead is 21-17. Villanueva, good shooter, going to the line for two. As we see this fast break caused by another turnover set. Back-to-back -back hits by the archers. One of our Milo fast break. Drink Milo every day. By the way, just to correct something yesterday, LaSalle's women team won their third straight volleyball title, not just back-to-back, -back, so that's three straight titles for LaSalle. And so their sports program really cooking. In the meantime, back to basketball, Cholo Villanueva on your screen, six, the first. And again, he's one of those guys, you know, who, who might not play 40 minutes a game, but he's going to have a significant impact on this game. How important, uh, you, you, Alex, you, you're a starter, but how important is it for those players who know when they're coming in, how many minutes they have to give? How important is that for the player to know? Well, I think more important than knowing exactly how many minutes you're going to play, it's knowing that you're going to play so that you're ready okay. to play. Knowing that you're going to be in this game and that you playing is going to have a significant impact on the outcome of the game. Good point. So you need to be mentally prepared, whether it's two minutes or 25 minutes. We are now on a five to nothing run by De La Salle. Fernandez gets it over to Rezada at three. No, the rebound controlled by Fernandez up against the ground finish right there. Nice offensive rebound and a tough finish in traffic by Fernandez. Benedict Fernandez, six-foot rookie for MBU, already with his first basket. Downstairs we go to Benitez, working against Mangamas. He found space to dish off to the Ben a slam a jam on for Mayor Hopper, if not for that foul. Boy, what a great play by Benitez. He faked the handoff, and he got his man to bite on that, which left the middle open. And instead of forcing a shot against one of the best shot blockers in the UAP, Arwin Santos made a nice drop pass to Meyer Hoffman for the dunk. He just didn't count because he got fouled before it. Samsung courtside update about the Green Archers with Mickey Dennis. Coach Francis made the first day's game with his team's mental approach. He wants his archers to zoom in on their determination. We are this year's finals uninvited guests. No one thought we'd be there, so we have to maximize it. Coach wants his team to loosen up on the court. I want to see all five guys hustling back on defense, and I want those second chance points, he said. We have to believe in ourselves. Treasure this moment. You won't ever see this kind of atmosphere or this kind of crowd anywhere else. This moment is priceless. Let us make the most out of it. Seven. And now the motivational skills of the coaches are being put to a test here. Because the X's and O's, they are, are important, but you know, it's more keeping the players up to the challenge. Couldn't, couldn't be any, said any better. You know, these kids on the court will never have a chance, most likely, to be in this kind of, and who knows better than that than Coach Franz, who's experienced this environment so many times. I mean, this is great. Out of all the basketball that I've been in my life, Seth, this is one of the loudest arenas, and it's just to be a part of this atmosphere is just fantastic. So these kids do need to step up and make the most of it. Great motivation. You know, when these guys are old and gray and be probably enjoying themselves in the right old ages, they will remember these moments. But for your generation, you've got videotape. What a shot by Gasha, but Arvin Santos just a presence there, and a foul against, is it Mayor Hoffer? Yes, it is. Yeah, what you were saying about remembering, these guys remember it until the day they die. This very day, they will remember for their life. Here we see a great challenge by Santos, and why is he the reading, leading rebounder in the UAP? Right there, he's always on the glass. Absolutely. And our smart buddy, instant replay smart buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. FBU still in command, 25-18, because we did enjoy was a nine-pointer. Villanueva scribble, broke it up, time! Another turnover forced by LaSalle, leads to a layup by LaSalle. Amaras, great hustle. And traveling against Mayor Hopper. Boy, these guys are scrapping, that's great hustle right there. You love to see guys get on the floor for the ball. And take a look at this steal by T.Y. Tan, a Samsung steal with Samsung. It's not hard to imagine. 25-20. Now, LaSalle, the key for LaSalle to start the press is when they score a basket. Be ready for the press. I'd just like to go to Yvette Gavieras quickly now for an update, a Samsung courtside update about the Tamarouse. 
All right, as early as now, the cameras must already be working doubly hard. The archers would not give up that easily. They are very unpredictable. So guys, we have to increase the pressure we are giving. Also, we always be alert and ready. Coach Bert Flores adds, if there is a chance to attack, then do not hesitate to go for it, Seth? Absolutely, I think that's the way to go in the meantime. A five second inbound violation committed by FU. And again, they're just forcing turnovers left and right. LaSalle is, and that's what's keeping them in this game. They haven't been shooting the ball great from the field in the half-court set. They want to get turnovers. They want to get fast breaks off those turnovers. Gives you easy scores. So their defensive pressure is really paying off. What's scary about Yo, Tang, and Villanueva attacking you is that they can score on the break and even from afar, but Yo unable to connect. The rebound being contested. <laughs> Good effort right there by Benitez. You know, you're not going to win too many jumping contests with Arwin Santos. Oh, He's yes. long. He gets off the floor real well. But Benitez showing his aggressiveness, going after the ball just as hard as Santos was. FPU gets to keep possession with a fresh shot clock because of the possession arrow. Oh, sorry. It is LaSalle keeping it. Yo. Tang attacking. Gets it to go. Good fundamental basketball right there, getting his man off his feet with the head fake, allowed him that penetration deep into the lane. Nine point lead, now a thing of the past. As Villanueva goes to Mangajas, unable to start Villanueva. Five with a great pass, but Arvin Santos with a follow. You know, one of the reasons Arwin Santos is a back-to-back -back MVP, he never gives up on a play. It looked like it was going to be an easy layup by Mangajas. Arwin just kept coming to the glass, crashing, didn't give up. After one tip there, didn't give up, kept his hands high, kicked it back up. And again, that relentlessness is, uh, is something that's made him the player he is today. Absolutely power move, powered by you, Remy got high on energy drink with the young Ion. Santos. There are a lot of main violations today, and that's understandable, because both sides want to get the ball so much. Well, you know, it's... <laughs> I don't know if it's the atmosphere, if everybody's excited, if people are just a little jumpy, they're jumping the gun on coming in or not, but it seems like every single free throw we've had a violation. So. Imagine this, it's Thursday, they've been told by each of the coaches, we have to win this, we have to win this. Can you imagine the adrenaline flowing here today? Well, and I'm sure that both coaches have been having some intense practices leading up to today, so these guys are on edge, ready to go. I remember when we were starting the NBA, you were saying, we're tired of beating up each other, and remember <laughs> that when uh, you were playing for Manila. And, you know, I'm sure they're tired of beating up each other, they'd like to take on an opponent. In the meantime, the miss by Santos, chance for LaSalle to come in even closer. It's a race of oh. chance, a pass by Ederton, Arwin, and a foul by Villanueva. And he got him in the back of the head there. Uh, I think Arwin wants a, wants a intentional foul, but you know what's great? What caused that turnover and breakaway? Arwin Santos, your power forward or center, comes from behind and hustles and catches a point guard and deflects the ball and then sprints on the court for what was going to be a dunk, but then Villanueva hustled to, to try to foul him. I think he got up a little high, so they might be... Did they call him unsportsmanlike on that stuff? Or was the... That's Romarin is on the floor. And they call it an unsportsmanlike foul. So I, I think that that means Arwin's going to have two shots and uh, FU will get the ball back, I believe. Let's see uh, where Villanueva got him on this foul. It's a smart body slow-mo. Smart body, the number one free paid service in the country. You have to understand the context why the referees are calling it this way. So much raw emotion has happened. We all know what, about, what happened at the end game with Arwin Santos. They don't want anything like that, even during the game or after the game, to happen. Yeah, that's right. And I think the, the rule there is actually you need to make a play on the ball. Yes. Well, the ball was not anywhere accessible um, to the defender there. So I think that's why it was probably within the rule of uh, correct ruling. Perhaps Mamalan's uh, take is that it was just a tap yeah. of a, an effort to commit the foul but it is a seven-point lead for the Tamaraz with six and a half remaining. Well, you know, and, and I actually, I like the call by the referees because yes. you want to see these two great teams, great programs coached by great coaches decided by the players on the floor. 
and not have anything out of hand happen. Absolutely. Um, well said. So so dictating early on that they're not going to let anything happen, I think sets a good tone throughout the course of the game. Franz Pumarin again signaling with his right uh, the right leg of his pants. He must have very loose pants to be able to do that, really. William Leva, Kabatu, short passes by Delasau. Oh, he's left with it. And Kabatu, I think he has to be, if not the best, one of the best passing power forwards in the UAAP. He just, uh, he really has great court vision for a big man. Benitez taking care of business there, cutting down the lead to five, getting the six minute mark now. Here's Fernandez, Yo keeping him busy. Yo takes it away. And, and again, that's what I talked about, Seth. If you're going to be standing in one place, just dribbling the ball, not making a move to the basket against the south, you're setting yourself up to get the ball taken from you. Sir Henry C. enjoying the action. He's always here when we have a big game. And it is a five-point second quarter. Glad you're here with us, Alex Compton, with us here courtside, together with our entire ABS CBN production team. For sports, Tabatu with a good reverse. Good, strong. And yet, under control drive by Kabatu. That's one thing I like about him. He really plays under control a lot. You don't see him just leaving his feet each, you know, like he did right there. But. Kabatu with five points. Fernandez replying on the other side of the floor. Great find right there by the point guard. And somebody in LaSalle needs to make sure that if they're pressing and double teaming, you rotate to protect the basket first. You cannot leave a man wide open under the basket. And I'm sure that Coach Franz is frustrated by that play right there. At the end of the first half of game number one, there was a 13 to nothing blast by FBU. Of course, we had Eder Salgua shining brightly in that particular one. And LaSalle had the lead at the end of the first half, though, 43-42. Here's the Kabatu running on Ion Energy drink power move from the Shong Ion. Yeah, he's a, he's a strong player, strong kid, good finish there. And what you said earlier about the runs, you never give up in a game like this. There's just LaSalle presses, forces turnovers. And if you're SBU and you get up, you don't think that the game's over because LaSalle goes on runs. And if you're LaSalle, FEU went on a run last game, the 13-0 run that you mentioned. So this is going to be a seesaw battle, I expect, for the Horn again. They need to stop at the keyhole. It is batted away. 4 46 remaining for this first half. And FEU's gone to a zone here. Uh, from Bell, oh, that's out to shoot from the outside, but Tom says I'll drive through. Yeah, way to, way to step up, you know, Tom's got some pressure on him, he's got to step up and make plays today. After not scoring anything in game number one, he has six points and he's leading this bus stop. Yo, go! Great pass to probably the best finishing two guard in all, all of the UAAP right now. Villanueva in a rush. And Lassar with a chance to grab the lead after being down by as large as nine. Yo, the open shot won't abide. Benitez fighting. It is Fernandez with it. High in the sky is foiled. Here's Chan driving, scooting inside. Sorry. Great finish by Jeff Chan, but FBU needs to take care that they don't get into LaSalle's track meet. William Reba angled away by the LVU defense. And Coach Burke Flores telling his point guard to slow down, settle down, run the play, get a good shot. This looks like their pick and roll, but William Reba has other players. Nice, strong drive to the basket, good body control to be able to finish that shot. It was intended as a twin high post play, but he threw off the team by attacking. It's an air ball. Kabatu asking for a foul. Nothing. Arvin Santos has it. William Reba looks ahead. It's batted from behind. It's a foul on Santos. And it's much more like foul. And I didn't see what happened. I was following the ball there when Joseph Yo took the ball from behind. So let's see if we can get on the uh, replay. What happened? <laughs> I think this is first, the basket by Yo, a Milo fast break, big Milo every day. Here we go, here we, here's what you asked for, Alex. Yo, didn't ask you five. Uh, oh, okay, they were saying that he tried to trip Villanueva on the play, okay. So I guess turnabout's fair play, right? They got a Villanueva on an unsportsman like call on uh, Santos, and now it's back the other way. But you know, both these players, especially Arlen Santos, need to be very careful. One more and you're yes. gone. 
And if Arwin Santos is out of the game, that is a huge loss. Huge. He's the MVP of the league. He needs to play very smart. And, you know, same thing for Villanueva. He needs to be playing very smart. Both these guys have unsportsmanlike fouls. And I don't know the UAP rules, but I think if you're thrown out, you might be suspended the following game as well. Yes. So these guys need to just play smart and just play basketball and let all that other stuff just go. Villanueva with a second dip shot. Sinks it. Cuts it down to four. You know, you cannot blame the players, the coaches, and probably the fans. We're not acting like referees here today. Everybody is looking for the smallest of the advantages. And we're taking a look at Ryan Arrania, his favorite shot, of course, the other goal snap. Had a global prepaid. Now you are in. Yeah, this is uh, telling you something off camera. I would hate to have to officiate this game. Gosh, what an environment. Everybody's bad guy if you're the ref. Yep. Nope. But three guys decided to say yes, and that's why we have a game. Yep. There's Yo trying to drive against a double team. Sends it to Habato, sidestepping. Okay, missing. Well come. Big finish. Habato's really stepping up and playing better than he did last game. He's making some plays, he's making some shots, doing a good job. Here's Flores in the game for the first time. Pass downstairs, the dish up to the other side. And that is red cleanly by the defense. And the pressure defense of the South causing turnovers that's gotten them back with them two points. This place is about to pop. It's Renaissance Ball as we welcome you to the Araneto Coliseum live here on Studio 23. Sam Cerveto with Alex Compton, Ben Gamieres, and Mickey Dallas. The South's been on really a nice run here, initiated by their defense. And wow, you know, I just want to compliment Joseph Yo on that pass right there because early in the game, we saw him make drives to the basket with the collapsing defense of the South and still forcing up double and triple pump shots. This time, you see his ability to penetrate, uh, which is basically, I think, unparalleled for the two-guard spot in the UAP. And he makes the right pass, allowing his teammate to get fouled. Good play, that type of play that, that LaSalle needs from Joseph Yo. Alex Compton putting our captions on our Smart Buddy instant replay. Smart Buddy, the number one replay service in the country. It is the third personal foul of Isip of that play. Now, Isip has had a problem of committing fouls a little too early, but he, that's the way he plays. Well, he's, he's a physical guy down there, and he's a great rebounder, and you know, I don't think he was too happy with that call, but look at Arnold Santos get up in the air. What a, 33 with 2 and 19 to go here in the first half. Game number 2, FBU taking game number 1, 75-73. There's an offensive ball whistled against FBU. It is on Juarez, he's second. And that's the right call, and it's good D right there by Casio. Taking it in the chest, he read his defenders moving, and the, the offensive player's moving. The offensive player does put his shoulder down right into Casio's chest by made an easy call for the referees. FBU with the penalty pit already, with seven, the ELSU with five. Go! And of the way! But he is guilty of the offensive foul. And good defense again. It's one of the things I, I really like about a lot of programs. They really like teach their defensive players to step in, step up, and take the charge. It's just great help defense. Oh, what a picturesque shot coming from the cameras of director Abed Ramos this afternoon. Great team defense. And again, that typifies why FEU was the best defensive team in the UAP this year. Guys who were willing to step up and sacrifice their body. And two free throws on the offing from the 15th parallel, as Ruben Gonzalez loves to call it, from Francis Barcelona. And Barcelona's role just got a little bit bigger with Isip picking up his third. You know, can you imagine what a what a blessing for FEU to have Mark Isip coming off the bench? Oh, yes. He's a mythical five player. I think that's the reason why Mark Isip does come off the bench more often than not, because they're trying to preserve him and not commit too many fouls as well. Yeah, that's a good point, sir. And, and again, though, I think that makes uh, Barcelona's role that much bigger now Absolutely. with Isip in foul trouble. That's even the best point there in that discussion. Split from the charity line by Barcelona, he's a three-point lead. Separation move by Cavati. 
really used his strength to create leverage to get away from Santos and make that shot. It was more of a looked more like a three-man than a four-man on that play. Arwin Santos lurking at the top of the key hole side. Can't drop in anything from there. Great rebound by Aranya. And again, that's exactly what LaSalle needs to do. They need to attack the glass. Sidestepping motion. No goal. Arwin Santos currently 0 of 3 from the three-point area. In the first half of game number one, he was one out of six before he suddenly waxed on. Had that big three at the end game as well. Do that Weber. Oh. Yes! Oh, what a tough shot. What body control. I thought he was off balance. Personally, I thought he was going to shoot an air ball. To, to make that shot ringless. Oh, I mean, wow. Tough play. To be young and have those legs, huh? <laughs> Aranya. Oh. is going to need more more plays like this from Aranya. Yes. They're going to want to, I mean, gosh, again, we just saw two back-to-back -back great finishes <laughs> from Villanueva and, and Aranya. Oh, to be young and have those legs. <laughs> and, of course, we've got uh, Mac Cardona watching, of course, and you know who he's rooting for. Adolfo was guilty of his third foul in that last sequence. Even our team is on the ball with our graphics and our stats team. And as I saw on the uh, updated me quickly on Arwin Santos' performance, meanwhile, Villanueva having trouble against Casho. Villanueva, hop, step, a little too strong, keeps it alive, but he's not on firm territory. He came from the outside, did not establish position on the baseline. That's right, and gosh, you know what's up? It's 38 38, 29 seconds left. Sal needs to get a good shot here, working around, know what they're looking for, be patient, run the play, get a good shot, but. What an atmosphere. We're going to be going into halftime with it. just a great game again. Again, in game number one, it was 43-42. De La Salle at the end of the first half. They survived a run by every with his 13 to nothing. It's a new pace. It's called. He's angled away. There's time for one last team. Rosada is fouled by Casio. And... But I think they're in the penalty. Yes, you're right. So Rosado, who started off very hot in the first quarter with eight points, is now going to the line for a chance to get his ninth penalty. That's Chuck Reyes analyzing from that perspective. Absolutely. He's uh, got a great basketball mind right there. I'm sure he's enjoying what he's watching. We've got Pecto Calma, Peter Martin. Hey! Rosada's first. Well, his stroke looks really good today. He's really stepping up and shooting the ball well. Rosada's shot looks nice. And again, FEU, this is one of the guys that I expect to step up today. He's, he's done a great job. He's going for his 10th point now from the line. Goes two for two. And gets FEU the lead. Checking in for FU is number five. It is Morris. And if I'm LaSalle right now, I want to get the ball in Joseph Yo's hands and let him create. Give him this last six seconds. Yo has that in mind. This first half is over. What another great half of basketball. It's a two-point game, Seb. We got exciting plays made by both teams. I mean, great plays like this. Still, we have a great body control. But it's, what a pleasure to be a part of this game. And we will be back to break it down. Have some cheering as well. This is game number two of the finals. It's what you expect. The coaches who are going to have their teams ready. And as we go to the stats here and look at the stats, you see that FEU is shooting the ball great from the field. They're shooting 50% from the field. It's just what you want. LaSalle not shooting the ball as high a percentage from the field, but getting more shots. Why is that? Jump right down to the bottom of the screen and look at the turnovers. 
FEU already has 17 turnovers. That's what has allowed LaSalle to be in that game. See, what happens is, look at the turnover, 17 to 7, that means there's 10 times, 10 possessions where LaSalle gets a shot, where FEU doesn't, give you a, more of a chance to score. Look at the rebounds, FEU, who dominates rebounding, is doing that again. They have 10 more rebounds. So as we said in the beginning, Seth, whoever steps up and negates the other team's strength the best, I believe is going to merge victorious in this game. So if you're FEU, you've got to take care of the basketball. And if you're LaSalle, you've got to attack the glass. Absolutely. As we continue with our Samsung halftime report, some great moments in this first half. Kabatu is contributing, and that's significant for De La Salle. He has really stepped up. We saw the nice head fake and finish there over two good defensive challenges. Kabatu's had a really good first half. As we take a look at Santos, and as we segue into the scoring meters, some players continue to shine, but there are still some players who have to step up here today. Absolutely. Well, Santos, again, continuing a, a just what was a great game one. Rosada stepping up. He's already complete. I think he doubled the score already from game one. Um, Kabatu has stepped up again, showed Aranya's playing a good game. Tang has, has showed, Tang was scoreless last game. He's stepping up, playing well. Joseph Yo, who don't for one thing, and second, think if you're FEU that Joseph Yo is done. This is LaSalle's second turn with the ball. They did not score their first foray, but this time they do. Kabatu picking up where he left off in the first half. And, you know, for a great defensive team like FEU, there's no reason why that guy was wide open for a 10-footer on the baseline. Somebody got mixed up on the switch there. Kabatu with nine points. Already a major improvement on game number one, and LaSalle takes it away. Aranya wants to create that space underneath, and LaSalle with its second taste of the lead. A great presence by Ryan Aranya to step up and use his body to create that shot. Saldua's attempt won't bite, and here's an opportunity for Delasal to move forward, but Saldua steps into the pass. Good transition defense right there by Saldua. He actually baited Joseph Yo into throwing that pass, knowing that he was going to shoot the gap and make a steal. Saldua just lost his ball. Tied, no, 42 to 40. This is for La Salle, as we mentioned, already in the lead. Vicky, let's go to you with this quick Samsung courtside update about the Green Archers. You know what, Sam, the more time I spend with this team, the more I am convinced that this is a dream team, simply because this is a young team of dreamers. I wish I could see their faces inside the building. I mean, the desire in their eyes is unbelievable. Inside Coach and Mike, this team that in games like this, the little mistakes cost them big, so there's no more room for mistakes. Let's not make it hard for ourselves, Coach said. Let's rebound, go for the ball, don't wait for it. Let's run our offense. Trust me, Seb, we just have to want this. Absolutely, and an exchange of baskets, one from Maranya, a three, and then Risada had his version, a layup on the other side. It is currently 45-42, De La Salle. And Risada is just having a great game when he needs to. Barcelona gets jammed by the basket, but has the presence of mind to put it back in. Good finish down there in traffic. Right? They blew the first one, finish the second one. Don't give up on the play. Marcelliano already with five points. Here comes Kabadu attacking ferociously. Throws it up, misses the shot. Marcelliano is there for his fourth rebound of the defensive glass. Villanueva applies the brakes. Villanueva tries to scoot inside there. Hopper with some quick hands. Here's Tang leading this three on two. Tang says, I want this 15 footer. Can't make it. The ball is loose. It's in the hands of Tang. They will recycle the offense. Tang dribbling around trouble. They lose it. Saldua up a step ahead. Was more concerned with the defensive man. Fights against three and scores. And stuck with it again. Same thing. He missed the layup he should have made, but he didn't give up on the play. Put himself in position to finish that basket. Great effort. And now it's the turn for FBU to turn on a six to nothing run. And you were right, Alex, about the momentum swings in this game. Turnaround shot does not work. Great block by Arwin Santos and a great box out by Barcelona. Two big men of FU coming up with big plays. Nice Inside pass. to Barcelona. Just really good point guard play right there. So very nice pass by Villanueva. Just picking his spots well, giving his team options to work with. Tap with a three. 
championship fight right here. Blow for blow. Of course, way back in March 1975, this venue for the third Titanic struggle between Ali and Fraser. But this is just game two, and Tom takes it away from William oh. What a pass to Mary. Watch this KFC assist from the ground. And what a fine delivery and a possible KFC assist of the game performance by Tang and Mayor Hoffer, presented by KFC. Mayor Hoffer with a strong finish, but really credit T.Y. Tang for that basket. He forced the turnover and made one of the pass. We can with the first foul of this second half. Aranya likes that spot. And the Tavaraz. Substitutions here. I think Meyerhoff is coming up. Benitez coming in. Just a little of his groanness coming out as he gets engulfed by the situation, but he will definitely mature as things go, as time goes by, and should be an asset for Dallas as the years continue to go for this program. Abato, this is a good inbound. Yes! Great finish. Now that's twice. And Abato's got easy baskets. You know, I don't know what's happening with that. You switch there, but you can't leave a man that wide open. Four to nothing run. It was a five to nothing run earlier by LaSalle, then a six to nothing run by FDU. Now a response by the Green Archers. And this is, and Tabatu says, I don't want to get entangled with this. Five and 30 remaining. Traveling violation. And LaSalle keeping possession now. Aranya! that wide open three. Aranya now with two threes here in this quarter, which have boosted the chances of Dallas on the overcook this particular attempt. Deep pass to Kabatu, touch pass to Aranya. Aranya jammed downstairs at the baseline, a foul. And the South really just come out of the halftime huddle, ready to go. They put on a nice little run and, and they were playing well. And here you see, just no challenge on the shot right there. Arwin Santos is standing in front of him, but you gotta, you can't just stand there with your hands up. You gotta get there and alter that shot, make it a more difficult shot for the offensive player. Mark Buddy three, Alex, uh, number one big eight service in the country, as everybody knows. And the South still keeping possession. Now they're shooting threes like crazy because they're hot in that area. FU, you know, Ryan hit that shot, went to their zone, and now it looks like LaSalle's going to his zone themselves. In the final quarter of the first game, it looked like FU was going to be on fire until the very end, but then Bellasar was not yet done, and the game went into 70 all, and there was the big baskets by Yo as well as Aranya. Get to know Mark Isip. In our Attic Mobile profile, Attic Mobile prepaid, now you're in. And this is, of course, his last year with the Tamaraus. And what a, you know that that guy wants to go out as a trainer. Big, big shot right there by Fernandez. LaSalle went to their zone. FU wingmen need to step up and make those threes. Good shot right there for FU. Benedict Fernandez knocking in a three, got to get down to four. Benitez takes the pass, goes to Aranya, feeling good from three-point distance, towards the inside, buys this difficult, difficult shot, but not... Oh, yes, gets called for being on the baseline. Right now, we have a four-point game, and again, FEU needs to be under control, get a good shot, and work the ball around. Mr. Rosette Pusha, enjoying, Pusha, rather, enjoying the basketball game this afternoon. You know he's, who he's cheering for. The gold stab, and here comes De La Salle, the Ninja Cup! Let's That kid is one heck of an athlete. You just saw him explode down the floor, and explode up in the air and get that dunk. Green Archers with a six-point lead. Chan thought about it, decided to change the angle. It's an air ball. It's a good
good shot, but had no legs. Yeah, he was stepping back away from the basket, so his momentum made it very difficult. Isip Quartigio. Wow, what a hustle's coming to the fast-paced game we got right now. Aradia corner, shot! Villanueva. Villanueva sends it into the corner to John. The shot won't work. And a foul against Mayor Hofer, who's looking around for who guilt was guilty of that foul. Let's go now to Yvette Gavieres for a Samsung courtside update about the time around. All right. Coach Bert Flores reminds his players that this is the final. This is our chance, guys. All is at... Sorry, all is asked now that if you have to take care of the ball, do not forget to run back to defense and exert more effort in diving for the ball. This game is in your hands, so please think and stay focused. Coach Bird to the timer out. Sev? Thanks a lot, Yvette. Boy, this third quarter. But sometimes in the finals, the third quarter is not the quarter that decides it, really. That's right. Well, LaSalle has really stepped up and made a great run, but this game is definitely far from over. There's 12 and a half minutes left, seven. What are the reasons why is LaSalle all of a sudden up nine after being down two at the half? They've hit four threes. They have 14 perimeter points. They've actually out-rebounded the top rebounding team in the UAB FU. They've caused more turnovers, and they have seven turnover points. Hernandez hijacked. They scamper for it. And here come the archers, the defending champions. And FU really needs to stop right here. If you're up, you don't want to see LaSalle get into a double-digit lead. Tense moment. They need this thought about it, but the shot clock not winding down the court. They have to make a move. Come on, who makes his move. Knocks it in! Nice under control play right there by Kovacic. Good head fake, good patience. And, you know, he's just got a really nice medium-range jump shot there. Santos has not scored a basket here. He has not had any touches that they can talk about. Dipsy do won't go and Santos. I think he heard you, sir. Yes. I think when <laughs> DJ and Boom covered him also in the first game, they said in the fourth quarter he wasn't touching the ball, then they suddenly gave it to him. And he drilled in that long three. Well, and if you're after you, you're gonna want the ball in Armin Santos' head. Now he's got a tough matchup with Cavato, who's been playing well today. Cavato launches a long one. Aranya there, overshooting. They need this juggling. Time down to a minute and 20. Great pressure right there by Arwen Santos. I think they get a foul call here. I think they will call a foul on Santos. Second of the game. Well, that was a, it was a tough position for Benitez to be in. He was in the corner. Arwen Santos, who's one of the quickest, most athletic big men in the UAAP, pressuring him. Um, just got a little over aggressive with the foul. But if you're Benitez, you can feel pretty uncomfortable with Arwen Santos draped all over you. A minute and 15 remaining. Cash your wide open. It's easy over to William Weber. As you know by now, William Weber is the uh, nephew of Minister Brother Eddie William Weber, and he has some of his cousins here watching you today. And Mark Easton fires one in, cuts it down to seven. Pasha! Oh! Mahas fighting! And a foul against. Ryan Aranya, I believe. It's Aranya with his second. And you know. Yeah, he fouled him, but Aranya does a great job offensive rebounding for this out. He makes more good things happen by going to the glass than bad things. So it's one of those things you just let go. He's an aggressive player. He gets that put back a lot. He does a good job. And enjoying the game, his brother Andy Villanueva. You know, I know he said it's his birthday. Somebody just told me it's his birthday today, and he's watching his nephew, John, is here today. That's a nice birthday present to be able to watch. Your and nephew in this kind of atmosphere. And, and, and I would like to feel that the tickets came from Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> the 
In the meantime, here's Isip. Isip down the middle. That's just, again, for your power forward or center to be able to do that off the dribble, that's just uh, it's a nice play by Mark Isip. This game has been, or this series, let's say it, has been nothing but momentum chips. Yeah. Marshall aching for a basket. Aquino. Oh! Pass the ball up. That's a foul on Villanueva. This is for Cholo Villanueva of Dallas Hall. You know, Jeff Chan drew the foul there, Seth, but there were three guys on him. And one thing you need to realize is knowing the time and the score and the clock, there's 1.5 seconds now. He could have passed the ball ahead up court. Somebody could have gotten an easy shot there. And there's a quick turn, Chan. LaSalle was not yet in penalty, it was just their 14 balls, so that's why there were no free throws. At the end of the third quarter of game number one, it was all tied up at 59, but now it is De La Salle ahead by five, with still one more quarter left to complete the history of game number two. Oh boy, uh, this place is still rocking, and the fourth quarter is still ahead of us. Uh, we are filled with uh, great moments, and this is one of our great spices of life. Jack and Jill, fantastic moment. Life is fun. Glad you could join us for the fourth quarter of play. 62-57, so the third quarter was La Salle's, Alex, in terms of a run. Yes, it was. They really stepped up and played excellent basketball. But don't don't count FEU out now. You know, and then we, we talked about this game being a game of runs. There's still 10 minutes left to play. And just it seems like just a second ago, the Sal was up nine. Now it's only a five-point game. Two experienced teams. Two teams who have been here before. Two teams that have won here before and have lost here before as well. Papato has to release it with three seconds left on the shot clock. It's an awkward shot, but under time pressure, you can not blame him. The lead pass, Risada can't control it. Here's William Weber, who wisely says, why don't we just set it up? Yep. And it was nice body control there by Risada. Pushing foul against Aquino. Yeah, just got a little over-aggressive there, and, and a lot of times you see, especially from pressuring teams, you'll see players do that, get right up in the face of the defender and actually push them out of bounds. Good call by the referee. And we've got Mr. Ricky Palou, Dr. Matibag, of Adamson University. We have Mr. Fusset, of Lasalle, because the UAE before all of them practically are here today because we had our award ceremony. Top of your picture we have uh, from the University of the East, Mrs. Lu Santa Ana, and Mrs. Francisco, of course, of USD, you know it, and of course, Dean Gilda L. Pui. How's that for checking attendance? Did I get that right, everybody? <laughs> Archers obtain possession. You know, I like that call by the referee. If you didn't see it, you can't make something up. He called the jump ball. It was hard for him to tell what happened. Good, quick call. You know, refereeing is so tough, especially in a situation like this. Tasha whips it over Benitez, who doesn't make it. Here comes Villanueva. Villanueva applying the brakes, gets a tangle. He's in shape, big, in the box is rejected, but he had traveled before he was awarded. Okay, right now, I think both teams need to see if they can settle down a little bit offensively, move the ball around and get a good open shot. Get to meet the new Eder Saldua in our Attic Mobile profile. Attic Mobile prepaid, now you're in. Of course, he was one of the big names in game number one, had 11 points at the big, big first half that gave that be quite a lift. Yo decides to pass off to Villan Reba. No, and it's clearly rebounded, uncontested by Chan. And that's the right pass, though, by Joseph Hill. He made a good pass. They have to take a shot somewhere here, but still eight seconds. Arvin, separation move. Won't work on the back shot. Saldua blocks it, nice drops pass. it inside. They overshoot, but Saldua's is there. There you see the rebounding prowess of FEU getting a few shots in the basket, finished off by the top rebounder in the UAAP, Arvin Santos. Eight point game, 7.49 to go. Here comes Yo. Yo looking for an opening. Saldua trying to keep in step. This shot from Mayor Hawkrest, a traveling violation against the Ninja. 
travel or not, I like the last two possessions, even though they haven't been fruitful for LaSalle. Yo has made two good passes. You know, I think a year or two ago he might have pulled up some shots, but he made a couple nice passes there for open look. Ready to Ion energy drink, powering that move. From the Shong Ion. Now, Alex, tell me if this is true. Or not. When you're called for traveling, you can't believe it sometimes. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's <laughs> you, you just say, no way, that didn't happen. I didn't do that. Rosada trying to be creative is thwarted, and Chan was saying, I'm open. Now, well, those things will happen because Rosada decided to go all the way in. Yeah, you know, he, he might have had the kick out there. Looks like he had the driving lane, but he challenged uh, guys 6'6 six, six with long arms, jumps out of the gym, made a nice block. Oh, what an inbound play. Chan says, now I got it. <laughs> got the ball back to him that time. Rosada heard it and said, all right, all right, here you go. Now it's a one-point game again, so. It is now a 10 to nothing run by FEU. Sal went on that run, FEU played a lot of zone. They've been shot out of that, I think. They're going back to their man-to-man -man defense. They're, they're sticking with their, their and LaSalle's had a hard time scoring against that. LaSalle brings up the press. When the pace of the game is quick, it is to their favor. Sean thought about it. Can't shoot now. Baldua decides to take it back. A three that bites. Great rebound right there by Meyerhoff. And a good outlet pass to start the break for LaSalle. Yo, Kabatu faces the basket, kicks it outside. Yo, wisely beats it around. Chan waiting for his next move. Kabatu and company have less than 10 seconds to put up a shot. Aranya Park and Road, and there's a foul. Well, you know, unfortunately, looking for, for FU, it looked like Chan feet, his body were in the right position defensively, but when he reached in, the ref saw him hit Aranya on the head. As we now present to you our Canon Power Shot of the Game brought to you by Canon, delighting you always. The guy's an explosive player. Joseph Yo is just a tremendous talent, and he's he's done a great job leading this out this year. It's been a two-minute drought by De La Salle till that basket of the free throw. You know, Seth, what happens sometimes with these uh, college guys is you get so hyped up in the moment. You make a big three, you make a big play, you feel like you're king of the world. Next thing you know, the other team's strung together a few good plays, and, and you're feeling like you're at the bottom of the world. I think this game's really going to be determined here in the fourth quarter by who can weather the storm, who can take the punches that the, the opponent throws at him and, and respond with, with poise and control. Santos aching for a shot. Easy. Foul upon entry. Good, strong rebound by the big man. Nice oh, pivot oh, through oh, to go oh, strong oh, to the basket. Oh, step oh, closer and draw oh, foul. Oh, Arwin Santos really aching for a shot here in this particular game. A big one, that is. Yeah, I think if you're after you, you want to find some ways to get him wide open. He hasn't had too many just all by himself kind of shots. Incredible defense for LaSalle, but he needs to get some open looks, whether it be from the free throw line or from the field. Now let's go over to Mickey Dallas for a Samsung Court side update about the Green Archers. During the final, the spotlight is inevitably on the Archers, but allow me to shift this to the LaSalle coaching staff for Sep. The team's unforgiving fighting spirit begins at the top with Coach France and the rest of the staff. Never giving up and always finding ways to get out of sticky situations has been their job description all these years. This quarter, none of the coaches want to see anyone give up. This is a thinking game. Make them think. Go all out. Remember, this is the quarter when Arwin plays his best. Stop him. Contain the rest of the shooters. This team isn't just playing to win, Seb. They're playing to defy what many think is impossible. Seb? And I think the strategy of watching Arwin here on the court should be taken seriously as Barcelona played a huge game here. The South lead down to one. Arwin Santos only 0 4 is just scoreless from the three point area. Yeah, and on that last play, Seb, credit that basket by building away with a great point guard play off the dribble, nice passing. DY Tom changing direction, goes to go. Three of the fights at the snub. And Saldua lets it float outside. And it's a one-point game again. 
with 5.39 left. We have, oh, this is just how a championship should be. No lead is safe. No lead stands strong. That was an 11 point lead by De La Salle when it was 62 to 51, but a big war towards the end. FPU now looking to regain the lead. They led by as much as nine earlier in the game when it was 21 to 12. What a block by Aranya. Oh, and Joseph Yost claiming the ball went off the FPU defender's back and LaSalle's bench is up in arms. De La Salle hanging. They, they, they were feeling it hit somebody off the back there. That's what they're claiming. I mean, down Yost, but we can see it. Great hustle. <laughs> you see how much the LaSalle team loves Joseph Yost. They just come, you know, Joseph Yost, they just come sprinting over to make sure that he's okay. I think he might just be a little tired. Hopefully it's not too serious. Samsung steal with Samsung. It's not hard to imagine. There's a stretch to the basket. The foul of that last sequence against Fernandez is third. And Yo gets a warm round of applause for a valiant effort. It is now 66-63 in favor of the Green Archers with 5.16 to go. And too many times, uh, if, if you're FEU, you just, you've just you seen it too many times. Where too many dribbles, LaSalle comes to trap, and the ball gets taken away from you because you're still dribbling the ball uh, as the double team comes. You know, you just as the double team comes, you need to find the open man and stop playing around with the basketball and make the extra pass. I think. That's one of the things that's led to FEU having so many turnovers so far this game. And those turnovers have res resulted in bas baskets, as we just saw from Joseph Yo. They really need to be aware of where the defensive pressure is coming from, where the double is coming from, look for the open man and get rid of the ball right away. I think they will get Kasha to shoot the bonus here. Yeah, I think uh, because some of the coaching staff from LaSalle ran out to, to check to see if Joseph Joe was okay, out of genuine concern for their star player. Um, but apparently the ruling on that is that if the coaches go out on the floor, then the player needs to be subbed out. But knowing Joseph Joe, he'll come right back in. It looks like he's stretching. I don't know if he caught cramps or... What do you think, Alex? It, it looks like he might have just caught some cramps in his right calf muscle. Um, <laughs> and you can't blame the guy. He's been playing his, just playing his butt off all day. Just, At full throttle, yes. Oh, gosh. He's been playing great. So hopefully for LaSalle and all of LaSalle fans out there, those cramps won't come back and they can get the uh, hydration going. So you can see more of Joseph Hill's high flying moves at this point. Now, LaSalle would want nothing more than a bigger distance away from MPU at this juncture of the ball game as Kasha takes the free throw. In game number one, the 206 left, Yo hit a drive to make it 72 to, 72 to 70, then Aranya sprint from the free throw line, and then Arvin Sanders went to work. Yeah, Arvin scored the last five points of that game, but right now, FU has to be patient and get a good shot. They need to know what they're trying to accomplish here on offense. They saw that crossover dribble. Trying to lose the defense, Barcelona runs over the defense and guilty of the offensive foul. He's fourth. And I don't know if that's the second or third charge that Meyerhofer has taken, but he's done a good job of moving his feet and cutting off the slower big men. Really, the hat that players, huh? <laughs> and Yvette Gaviera is going to do an FBO sound support side update. Offense wins games, but defense wins championships. So the Far Eastern University Tamaros must then be focusing on their defense. Also, Coach Red Flores believes that the Tamaros has more to show. He wants to choose them up in order to reveal their true capacity. This is the last quarter, so everyone must step up and work if they want to end the finals today. Seth? Yes, indeed. In the meantime, Tang, Kabatu flying, losing the ball, however, downstairs. Easy pass it. The three men who will graduate control there, except for Santos, who was already ahead. Yo, good burning. 
And if you're FEU, again, so many of those times that you get pickpocketed, it's from behind. If you're a guard and you're dribbling, you need to bring the ball with you. You can't leave it behind and let the defensive player to come behind and just take it away. FEU running into a slew of errors here when it pounds the ball. In the meantime, this is a Samsung steal with Samsung. It is not hard to imagine. Now, Alex, when people say you play defense, many of the coaches will say, do not use your hands. But with De La Salle, because of their energy, they are given a little luxury, a little leeway of using their hands defensively. Yeah, well, and it's also because their feet put them in position to be able to use their hands. Good if they point. didn't move their feet, they wouldn't be there, and they'd be committing a lot of fouls. Kamadu thought about it, nine on the shot clock. Yo changes direction. Yo will turn, but twist. And that's the risk of that particular move. Well, I think he saw Arwin Santos, and he's had a history of uh, challenging Arwin Santos. We know that Arwin Santos is a great shot blocker. He's a defensive player of the year in the UAAP. So he didn't want to get a shot blocked in there, I think. Time down to four minutes, 69-63, De La Salle. De La Salle hoping to tie up the series, send it into a third and final game from Saturday. John is asking for it. John finally gets it. He is wide open. No one knock it in. Resada. It's a La Salle foul. You know, Arwin Santos made a very nice pass there. To Jeffrey Jack with a wide open three in the corner. You like to see the star player, Santos and Yo, making those extra passes when they're double teamed to their teammates for open shots. It's a higher percentage play than forcing up a bad shot. This is a bit of history. FU has lost only two games this season. They were games to UE. They lost 62-57 at the top of the second round. And again, Satineo 69-66 to towards the end of the second round. Yeah, I don't think you can expect to blow out this FU team. Arwin. That's a foul. They had to foul on Meyerhoff or on Cascio there? They give it to Meyerhoff. So he's got four. Benitez is going to come in for him. Um, but don't be surprised if Meyerhoff comes back in late in this game. You know, I'm looking at the shots of director Abit Ramos and the whole gamut of emotions I'm seeing. Everybody's wondering who will feel happy tonight, who will go home with a smile, who will have a nightmare tonight if there ever is one to lose the ball game. But what a game has been played here. Santos almost had it. Wow. And I got a feeling we're not going to know until the end of this game who's going to really end up winning this game. Zero of five from three-point distance. Gabatu behind the back, between the legs. And yo, too much muscle. Here's John ahead. We saw that. John, go! Great team basketball. Way to pass the ball. You know, if you're effective with the pass, you don't need to dribble so much. Excellent execution on the break. John going to the line for three points. What a chance to cut this game down to one possession, three points. Milo fast break, brought to you by Milo Drink. Milo, every day. You know, John has been aching for the ball. He's been asking for it, Alex. It's just good basketball. It's simple give-and-go basketball right there. Ball doesn't need to hit the floor. Just make the passes. The defender is going to have a much more difficult time. That's why you do the figure of eights, those three on twos during practice. That's right. John, that's it down to a three-point game. Three minutes and 17 to play in game number two. A lot of time left. The Sal wants to run their offense and get a good shot here. Pasha wide open. No, Arvin Santos has it. Villanueva over to Chan. Santos providing the shield. Chan behind the back dribble. Finds a small opening. He's in. Too strong. Arvin Santos there. Chan has it. It's Villanueva with it. Over to Risada with two threes in the opening quarter. Risada is stripped. And a 24-second shot clock violation. 69-66. Dallas all ahead. Benitez too far away to do anything. The shot clock coming down to 10. And FEU came out in a different defense. It looks like a scrambling 2-3 defense. Rush shot by Casho and he's a pass it. 
and that defense proved effective. Good call coming out of the timeout. I don't think LaSalle was expecting that. Nice defensive possession by FEU. And Nueva sees a small opening. You know, usually teams will throw a zone to offset whatever the defensive team was planning to do. And Araya gone from this game because of five balls, Alex. Well, and great penetration by Villanueva. Araya very not happy with the call at all. But he played hats off to this guy in a time when his team needed him to step up and, and really show his better voice He had 20 points, 11 rebounds, uh, one steal, played great defense, just a tremendous game for Aranya. You know, Aranya is still smoking. You, can, you know, he wants to get back into the game. It's hard when you're a competitor and you're not allowed oh. to be out there competing, especially when you're playing great. Yes. Let me describe by William Weber, 69, 67. Last two minutes, but you by Samson. It's Samson. It's not hard to imagine. Oh, what a great, great game. Well, Sal needs to get some movement here. There's a lot of standing around. Here comes Yo, Misada keeping in step. Villanueva open, short. Isip fighting for it. Villanueva has it, Isip. It'll be LaSalle's ball. Isip was on the line. Now I'm curious there, I did, did that ball hit the rim? Because the, the shot clock has been reset. Yes, yeah, yes it yes. did. Good job, whoever's operating the shot clock, good job. Seen very clearly in our Smart Buddy Instant Replay. Smart Buddy, the number one prepaid service in the country. Love to see. I mean, it's exactly how it should be. Bodies all over the floor, diving, fighting, scrapping, clawing for that loose ball. Long inbound, new shot clock. Rosada's doing a good job of denying Joseph Yo. He has, Joseph Yo hasn't had as good a game as he did last game, but he's still their man. Rosada keeping it step. Oh, what a shot! Villanueva, shot clock coming down to 12. Villanueva with a spin. He finds a route and scores. Great drive. You know, the high pick and roll has worked very well for FBU. Villanueva has been able to use his body and his superior size and strength against Tonga to get into the paint. Coming nice down to, to the final minute, Alex. Shot clock of LaSalle down to 10. Yo, you know where he's going. Here's Villanueva. Villanueva, I'm aware of the shot clock pressure. Yo! Oh. Oh. Wow, heads up play right there by Bill Nueva to save the ball. Oh. Gillette Vector, sixth man of the game, is going to be Mark Isip, nine points, eight rebounds, and two blocks. Came far from over, but he's been a lift coming off the bench. Mark Gillette Vector, sixth man of the game. Yeah, I mean, gosh. You know, we talked about it earlier, but what a pleasure to have a player of Mark Eason's caliber coming off the bench. You know, and a guy who didn't get mentioned very much, but, you know, well, we'll get, in, we'll get into him later, because I think he might get a little award, but a lot of these guys have stepped up. The players that we talked about in the pregame set, these guys need to step up and make shots. Tom, Isip, Villanueva, John, Kabatu, these guys have stepped up and made plays and made this game so much fun to watch. Mark Isip will make the inbound. The key here always is execution. They go to Villanueva. And they got a Kino on Villanueva. That's a different matchup. Two point game. Villanueva to Isip. We are tied. and a timely pass. And you know that Mark Isip spends time in the weight room because he went out strong in spite of the foul and was able to finish that play. Great offensive possession. Time to showcase our KFC assist of the game. The time to Mayor offer assist. Our assist of the game delivered by KFC. KFC also delivers what you're craving for. The style KFC delivery at 887-8888. 
That should be it. Look great after this game. You know, Seth, big free throw coming up here for Mark Eason. It's a tie game. There's 33 seconds left. He's three for six from the line. Something you really need to look out for if you're in the south. You have to box out. Carlos Santos gets tip ins all the time. Offensive rebound, putbacks. And if I was Arwin Santos, I would go hard to the glass right now because yep, the team's not in the penalty. They only have three fouls. They're far from the penalty. You only have two fouls. All the reason to just crash as hard as you can to see if you can make something happen in case he misses. He does not. It's a one-point FBU lead with 33 seconds remaining. And let's see what kind of defense FU is coming out. Are they going to stay man-to-man -man or are they going to throw the zone at him? Looks like they're in man. No more timeouts left. No more timeouts. Should the sophomore FU will rush to get their own basket. There's Yo. Yo gets a screen. Villanueva. This up. Tag! Well, not make it. Ball is loose. It's in the hands of Villanueva. Villanueva has it. He is fouled. coming from LaSalle because I don't think they'll rush it up by dribbling. Yeah, and if I'm LaSalle, I want to get the ball in the hands of Joseph Yo. He can create, he can create passes for himself, he can score, he can shoot the three, and he can draw defenses to himself and make the kick out pass. I'm not sure what play Coach Franz just drew up for his players over there, but I think that all the LaSalle players need to be ready to receive the ball as Joseph Yo or whoever dribbles the ball down and tries to penetrate and make a play happen. Anybody could get this next shot. Like I see Castro on the floor, he could be a candidate to fire. Absolutely. It doesn't matter whether it's a two or a three, but we can have us free throws. will have to be the most important thing here right now. What foul to give for FDU? This is what you dream of. This is what you practice as a player. You're by yourself in the gym. You imagine yourself in this setting. Game on the line, two free throws. I need to step up and make them with that pressure on yourself. And now, the biggest pressure that he has ever faced is right here in these two shots. First one won't bite. The door is still open for Delasal. Absolutely. He needs to step up and make this one so in case the Sal gets a two-point shot, it only goes into overtime. It's not a loss. Big shot here. Everybody here and you out there pinned to where you are right now. Villanueva adjusts, makes the second. Two-point game. Yo looking for the recipient. Yo looking for some help. They're still in the backcourt. Yo drops to the deck. It is a foul. But there's a foul to give for FDU. Absolutely. That's right. That's actually not a bad foul. No big deal. Joseph Yo, who's... You don't want him getting a full head of steam if you're FEU going to the basket. He can make things happen. Bert Flores is beyond himself as he tries to coach this team. The reporter, the photographer is already there, but still 3.8 seconds remaining. Oh, and that actually looked like he kind of slipped himself there. But again, if you're FEU, you got to realize it's not a big deal. You got 3.8 seconds left now. You got to get a stop. You got to get a stop. Do not allow a wide open three point shooter. You got to get a stop. Tom will make the inbound. Everybody trying to be coached here. Well, I, if I'm LaSalle, I don't want to throw the ball in the backboard. I want something going to the basket. Yo has it. Yo with a chance. Come on, to
shifting momentum. It just had to be MPU. Final say because perhaps they had wanted it more, but MPU was up against an assault team that refused to quit until the very end. Well, and you couldn't ask for two better games. Two games decided on the last shot, on the last play, it comes down to the very buzzer. We don't know who's going to win. No. And again, FBU's defense at the end, the very last play, is what got them this victory. Hats off to both teams. LaSalle has nothing to be ashamed of with their effort. They play great on the season. Coach Franz did a great job. But this is FBU's year. And Arwin Santos caps his second MVP by going out a champion. Bert Flores, first year to be head coach, took over from Coy Banal, was there when FBU lost out last year. But the Sal, they were the defending champs. They defended their title very well. They climbed back, flown back in the second round, but did not, could not come up with a formula to beat the only team they could not beat in the tournament, and that was FBU. Yeah, LaSalle's never say die spirit got them this far within a shot each game of winning the game. They did a great job. But again, hats off to FBU. Gosh, you know, total team effort. Guys stepped up and made plays. The guys that we talked about at the beginning, RJ Rosada steps up and makes plays. Barcelliano had a great game. Arwin Santos didn't have 29 points and 14 rebounds again, but he had another solid game. But it was the team effort, the way that FEU played together, that got them this championship. Barcelona, what a game he played also. And Mark, he said the seniors, the graduating students, get the honor of cutting down the cords. You know, and you just, this is what you dream of, the way to go out in front of a jam-packed capacity, more than capacity crowd at Araneta Coliseum. You get to cut down the nets in your last year. Mark Isif's got to be feeling pretty gosh darn good about his basketball career right now. And that is our final count of our final game for the men's tournament. In fact, many championships were won today. The women's title going to Ateneo. The junior's title going to De La Salle. So well, and the senior's title going to FBU. I'll go now to Yvette Gavieres, who has some very happy Tamar out to talk with. All right, and now with Coach Bert Flores and Mark Isif. Coach Bert, congratulations, by the way. Tanong ko lang, ano ang nag-motivate sa inyo para gumanda ang performance ng team this season? Oo, oh, unang-una, no? Pasalamat talaga ako. Hey, Lord, talaga. God is good. Talagang pinigay sa amin. Two games yan. Lagi kong pinagdasal yan. Saka BCF, tinutulungan nila ako. Champion for Christ. Saka sa lahat ng mga uh, EBS-CBN, yung, sum yung sumusuporta, saka yung bumubuo dito. Saka yung sumusuporta sa amin, mga FU alumni. Sila, Ramon Dito Ang, Magnolia, and then uh, Nike Philippines, mga Montenola family, lalo na si Mr. Anton Montenola, na binigay na akong chance na magkaroon ng ganitong uh, magkukot sa isang team. Salamat po, salamat sa lahat ng uh, taga Cebu, taga Consolacion. Kumusta mo niya? Ha, para sa iyo mo niya, kung may ikson. Salamat, salamat sa lahat. All right, thank you, Coach Bert. Mark, congratulations! Yeah. Thank you! All right, tanong ko lang, anong iniisip mo less than two minutes? When yung lamang ng Lasal four points. No doubt, no. Walang doubt na kami magchampion. We just want, we just want to give everything to the Lord. Glory be to God. Lahat sa kanya to truly a blessing. All right, thank you, Mark. All right, back to you, seven, Alex. Okay, thank you very much. And we have some very, very, very happy time around there, and we are not yet done here. Uh, Alex, you know, uh, Yvette's question was quite good. Two minutes ago, Lasal was still in control, actually. Yeah, well, in the history of, of these games and these series, in the UAV in general, but specifically with LaSalle and FEU, no lead safe. Four points, two minutes, that's just two possessions. And sometimes with the speed and the pace of the game, it's so quick yep. that it can be gone in 20 seconds, that lead. So, yeah, it's just great, great comeback by okay. FEU. Let's go to Mickey Dallas. Mickey, what do you have? Over here, I have Jeff Chan, of course, of the FEU Tamarows. Jeff, simula pala ng season. Marami nang nagsasabi na kayo na magta-champion. Nakita mo yung last minute, medyo lamang pa rin yung Lasal. Ano yung maniisip mo? Personally, did you ever doubt na, magta na hindi kayo magta-champion rather? Wala, walang doubt. Kasi, bili, ano, naniwala ako sa teammates ko. Kaya, kaya, kaya na-execute namin yung play. Yun, dahil sa, tiwala sa isa-isa. Alam naman natin lahat na si Arwin, hindi siya nag-pro dahil gusto niyo mapalik yung UAV crown sa FEU. Ano naman yung mga inspiring words na nabigay niya sa inyo? Una, sinabi nila na hindi na pinili yung pro. Doon pala na-inspire na kami lahat. 
Kasi sabi na, tulong-tulong kami para kunin yung crown. Thank you, Jeff Chan. Congratulations. Now over to their point guard, Jonas Villanueva. Congratulations to you, Jonas, as the Tamarau starting point guard. Medyo your shoes to fill of Denok Marante, medyo um, daunting ba? Pero how did you uh, handle the pressure? Well, it's not the season. I was just trying to play my game because uh, I, I can never really measure up to uh, Denok Marante's play uh, instantly. So I just, But I always believed that I could work my way to it. So I just try to uh, play my game, do my role because I... In this team, there's a lot of superstars, so all I'm trying to do was set the place, organize the team, and just to play my role, you know. So. Right, and you did very well this season. Congratulations to you. Now it's over to Ibed. All right, we have here Mr. Anton Montinola and Arwen Santos. Mr. Anton Montinola, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. After all the things you have gone through, how is it for you? Well, it's very sweet because uh, this reminds me of 1997 when we won four times. You know, twice in the eliminations and then two straight. And that seems like a long time ago, but um, happy to do it again. Thank you, sir. Arwen, okay, congratulations. All right. Anong feeling na nakuha niyo ulit, finally, yung title from La Salle? Uh, Siyempre, nagpapasalamat ako ng oras sa taas dahil... Sabi ko nga kanina, bago ako pumunta rin, bago ako pumasok dito sa arena, lumapit ako doon kay Inway. Sinabi ko na, kayo ang aming inspirasyon at, at sasandalan sa game na to. At uh, sana, yung, yung purpose ko na, hindi ako kaya, hindi ako nagpa-drop, kaya na, mabuti na tupad ko naman. Hindi ako nagkamali. Thanks, thanks talaga. Alright, thank you Arvin and congratulations again. Coach Bird! Uh, Magpa-thank you ako sa mga, mga, da, mga, mga players ko na malaking utang na loob ko si Arvin. RJ Rizada, uh, Mark Isip, then last year nila si Paul Flores, Edgar Saldoa, at sa mga assistant coaches ko, Mike Oliver, kaya, uh, Mike Oliver, Glenn Capasio, and Muriel Garcia, mga coaches ko, uh, APU alumni. Maraming salamat to. Maraming salamat sa supporta nyo. Alright, thank you. Back to Sev and Alex. Okay, we have our both our courtside reporters, Mickey Dallas now doubling up, and Mickey that did a great job as a uh, Courtside reporter for Dallas Al, but now as uh, our tradition here, both get to work no matter who wins, no matter who loses. Let's go to Miki, who has somebody special to talk to. Sam, I am with RJ Rosada. RJ, kakasabi mo ng sakin na this is your fourth and last season. So, uh, syempre, you won the championship. A great way to end your stint here at the UAP. Ano may expect namin sa inyo in the coming years? You may expect namin sa inyo in the coming years. <laughs> um, uh, mag magkikita kita pa rin tayo sa PBL. And hopefully, sasama ako sa draft kasama ni Arwin and Mark next year. Alright, RJ. Ano naman may expect namin sa team mo sa FDU next year, knowing that you're one of the veterans? Looking at your team now, sa tingin mo, back to back kaya? This I tell you, ha, marami pang uh, magaling na player yung FDU na nasa Team B. So, abangan na lang nila. Congratulations, RJ. Alright, Seb, back to you. Thanks a lot, Big It was birth the birthday of RJ yesterday. So many Octoberians here, so to speak. And this is the moment I guess everybody dreams of, uh, Alex Hoffman. Yeah, well, it's it's everything that you did. All the blood, the sweat, the tears, the samaha, and all the times that you've been down and picked each other up. All the times that, that you've been low. All the doubts that people have had. Should Arwen have come okay. back? Should he have not? Those are all answered and just rewarded right here in what we saw today in this game, in this championship that FEU just, just had to fight valiantly for. Thanks a lot, Alex. And we'll try to get Luke Gonzalez for the awarding cer ceremony. Welcome back, folks, to the Big Dome here at Studio 23. You're watching us live. I'm Boom Gonzalez for the awarding ceremonies. But before, before we give the main awards, we'd like to commend both schools for giving us an incredible series, season 68. Let's give a round of applause to both FEU and De La Salle University. What a series. Great two games, down, both going down the wire. All right, now let's move on to the awarding rights proper. And helping us awarding the first runner up or the whole UAP board right behind me. First, this classic finals encounter wouldn't have been possible, nor would the champion have rightfully earned the title if not for an opponent who presented a worthy challenge? 
Let's give a big hand of applause to the 2005 UAP Men's Seniors Basketball first runner-up, De La Salle University. Five titles in the last eight years.